Welcome to Click to Learn More, a show that sounds like clickbait, but is actually two dorks. I'm Liddy. I'm Dorm. And today, Dorm, I guess. Uh-huh. I have no, this is the first, hold on, I just want to say, this may be the first time ever mm-hmm. that I'm coming in an episode and I literally have no idea what we're talking about. Normally, like... Really? Yeah. Normally, we, we kind of, like, hit oh, on almo- it. Yeah, or... I almost told you, and then I didn't. But, I mean, not, I didn't keep it from you on purpose. I no, just, I, just I, don't, just, I just don't know. I just forgot to tell I you. I didn't ask. <laughs> I just forgot to tell We're you. We're just here now. Um, I do have a question. Uh-huh. Well, this, is, this, actually, this actually bodes well, then, because I have a question for you. Okay. How many stories do you think you've read in your life? Um, I, Read? Yeah. You've I'm read... Talking, I'll, I'll, about... I'll tell you. You've read seven. Oh, <laughs> I feel like it's more than that, but you know what? If you probably know better than I do, we are going to talk today about uh-huh. the seven basic plots. Okay. So this is plot of land. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Name another one. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. That's all. That's I got. what I thought. I was going to say like a um the uh gunpowder and treason plot, like the remember remember the fifth November gunpowder and treason plot. I don't know what you're talking about. What? Guy Fox? Guy Fox? Oh! Yeah. Did he say that? Yeah. I've read V for Vendetta. That's all I know about Guy Fox. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's part of that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I read it in middle school, sorry. Um, but the the seven basic plots um, basically says that, that every story can... The, the plot of every story can be boiled down to one of these seven plots. So every okay. every movie you've seen, every story you've read, every TV show... All right. Everything boils down to these seven plots okay. one one of if not a mix of these seven plots cool um so today's topics came or the the um rather my sources yes were um adweek.com um how to write a book now.com which was very apropos uh new york times.com wikipedia of course and changing minds.org so mm. um an organization I'm <laughs> an organizational a one what do you know um so the seven basic plots colon why we tell stories oh. um is a 2004 book by christopher booker yes a man named booker wrote a book explaining books i just need you to know that mm. in advance Thanks. bookception um containing a, a jungian influenced analysis of stories union s- Jung, yeah carl jung carl jung, carl yeah. jung jungian i looked up a, a um, Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> i looked up yu about it um containing a Jungian influenced analysis of stories and their psychological meaning. So that just ref- refers to, as you already said, Carl, Carl Jung. Yes. Carl Jung, um, a Swiss psychiatrist. And that brand or branch of psychology um, emphasizes the importance of the individual psyche and the personal quest for wholeness. So the seven mm. basic plots posits that seven archetypal themes... Uh, recur in every kind of storytelling. So Booker looked at why humans are psychologically programmed to imagine stories this way. Hmm. So he worked on this book for 34 years. 34? 34 years Jesus. he worked on this book. Um, That's, uh... To boil it down to seven. Huh. Strange. Because yeah. you, you would, like, seven's an God, odd like number. Your whole life. It's 34 years, man. Like, That's to, longer than I've been alive. Same. To boil it down to... That's insane. Like, to boil it down to seven plot... Like, you... All right, first of all, you must have really strong feelings about mm. this one thing. Yeah, to very spend strong 30, convictions. Yeah. yeah, 34 years on it, right? That's a long time. Anywho. So, what are they? I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, number one is overcoming the monster. Number okay. two is rags to riches. Like number, the jerk. Oh, we'll have, we'll have examples oh, we have too. Examples? But, but, Perfect. Yeah, yeah. But, um, rags to riches and then rags again is the jerk. <laughs> uh, the uh, three the jerk. is the quest. Four is voyage and return. Five is comedy. Six is tragedy. And seven is rebirth. So wait, comedy is just a story type? It's a plot point, which is weird, right? Hmm. We'll talk about that a little bit. I'm going to break down each one of them. But we okay. will we will briefly revisit these later as a, as a summary at the end. Okay. Um, I also found a list written by Blake Snyder, who was an American screenwriter. And the reason I, I talked about this is because I actually read this book in college in my screenwriting class. <laughs> well, all right. Yeah. You because went to college? <laughs> because... Uh, for my writing intensive class, I chose a screenwriting class. That's awesome. Um, I did uh, a, what was it? It was like a feature journalism class. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, we both went non-conventional. Yeah. Usually it's like history or something. Normally, like, we, people save their, at, at our college, 
their W credit. Yeah, they, they save their yeah they save their W credit for something that wasn't difficult, yeah. like wasn't challenging. A lot of people I know did anthropology. Right. Yeah. So it's like you write a paper, or you yeah, know, yeah. you write a couple of like research papers or whatever. I had to write seventy five pages of a script. Jesus, um, that's cool. I should have done that. It was super neat. Feature writing was cool. Both had to take some sips. Of our, pause, both yeah. had to take a sip of a drink there. Um, I really enjoyed it, but he had ten basic plot types in his book. Mm. Um, so the book was called. Uh, by the way, you can buy you can buy this book, the seven basic plots why we tell stories. That's on Amazon. It's on it's on there for like twenty three bucks or whatever. Like you can still buy it if you want to if you want to buy it. I guess. Um, but Blake Snyder had a book called Save the Cat. Um, and it was the last book on screenwriting you'll, you'll ever need. Mm. So it was basically like he would go through and talk about how like a movie had to have a save the cat moment, quote unquote, which was there has to be some point in the in your script where you like, oh, we have to save the cat. Like ah. we have to do this thing to save. Like, like, how are you going to do it? Like, how mm. do you go about it? Um, and I and I remember I really enjoyed the book, but his 10 were monster in the house. Uh, two was out of the bottle, which was like wishes and curses. Um, three was a why done it instead of a who done it. <laughs> Four was a g- golden fleece, which is like a quest or a journey of the original one. Like Jason and the Argonauts. Yeah. Uh, five was rite of passage. Six was institutionalized. Seven was buddy love. Eight was superhero. Nine was dude with a problem. Uh, <laughs> and ten was the full triumphant or underdog. Um, we aren't going to be talking about those, but I brought those up because I thought it was interesting that I mean, there are multiple versions of this. Like, yeah. the the seven are the ones that are, I guess, most closely looked at today. Mm-hmm. Like, when people are writing a screenplay, like, they take these into account. But, like, for the most part, you can pretty much write whatever you want. And sure. somebody's going to boil it down to something else, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, even if you intended it to be that way or didn't, it's how it's going to end up. Right. Um. So, today, however, we're going to focus on the original seven. Um, interesting side note, according to Adweek, this applies to advertising as well. So it's not just in Hmm. movies and stories, like any story you've ever heard. It also can apply to the story that you're telling in your advertising, which I thought was interesting for us because we kind of approach advertising in a different way from like, no offense, dear listener, but like the normal person would or or like a layman would. We think of things more in the like how can i sell it's this it's a profession it makes sense yeah, yeah, we're, yeah we're trained to I think of it like a, this i don't know as much about toilets as a plumber people may not know <laughs> as much, much about advertising as we totally do totally fair so I'll, I'll also be giving some examples of how it applies to advertising oh, cool. as we go um that's a little that's a little thing for you thank you <laughs> so it's also interesting to note that mr booker suggests that five of the seven basic plots which are overcoming the monster rags to riches the quest voyage and return and rebirth can really be placed under the larger umbrella of comedy in their purest mm. form they all have happy they have happy endings they trace <laughs> they trace a hero's journey from immaturity to self-realization and all end with the restoration of order or the promise of renewal um so those can be considered comedy because because comedy is a happy ending it's not mm. necessarily comedy doesn't necessarily so we're talking mean, about like the greek yeah yeah gotcha. yeah it doesn't necessarily mean that it's funny it just means that everybody is in pretty good spirits when it's over yeah. like we're not it's not the end of the world um Boo. So, <laughs> so we're gonna break these down okay. so number one overcoming the monster mm. first and foremost there's the anticipation in the meta plot um, where the hero is called to action. So they literally say that there's like, there's this moment building of anticipation where the hero is, understands there's this higher calling mm. and they are meant for better things and bigger things. Sure. Um, so following shortly after this is the dream stage where the adventure actually begins. The hero sees some degree of success and we're introduced to, to the idea that this hero could have some form of invincibility in some way. Like, you see them do these amazing things. You're like, oh, they're never going to get beaten, right? Mm. Think of, um, and in my they're mind... John Cena. <laughs> right. In my mind, I'm thinking of Iron Man. Like, in my mm. mind, my mind immediately went to Iron Man. Like, he's this normal person. He's called to action when his own weapons are used against him. He builds this suit. He is suddenly seemingly uh like invincible. invincible impossible to kill um and then 
However, the next stage is the frustration stage where the hero has their first confrontation with the enemy sure. and the illusion of invincibility is shattered. Um, afterwards, we reach the nightmare stage, which is normally the climax of the plot, where hope is apparently all but lost, which is every Marvel movie that you've ever seen, where it's like, oh no, this is it. What are they going to do? Can't yeah. believe it. And then suddenly the tides have turned and everything's fine, um, which is in the resolution. Where the hero overcomes all odds to win and or save the day. Mm. Um, so the overcoming the monster plot lies behind horror movies, thrillers like Jaws, um, as, well, as well as many war stories. Um, so Hollywood westerns and science fiction tales also fall under this umbrella. So in this genre, a community dwells under the shadow of a monstrous threat. It can be um, that a hero or a band of heroes go together to do battle with the beast, whether it's a giant white shark, an evil gunslinger, or a horde of Nazis. Mm. Um, initial dreamlike success is followed by a nightmarish setback, but a final confrontation results in victory for the hero, the vanquishing of the monster, and the restoration of order to the realm. It's important to note here that monster can be an even wider metaphor indicating any problem in life that has to be overcome. So it doesn't have to be a physical monster or a physical thing you have to fight. It could also be an internal conflict. It could be, you know, it could be any number of things that you have to fight against. Um, The journey in any monster plot is as much internal as external, uh, with the hero learning courage, resourcefulness, and other life skills and facing and overcoming the danger. Now, although the hero's reward is typically material, the greater reward is the enhanced social status they gain and, in storytelling, the opportunity to star in future tales. Mm. So, any time that you can be like, whoops, we, look at us, we won, we lived. See you in part two. Yeah. Or, you know, see you in part three. Um, examples of monster stories include uh, Jack and the Beanstalk, King Kong, Star Wars, James Bond, Aliens, all those good things. So... Once more, real quick, to sum it up, Booker describes the generic monster plot as the anticipation stage, which is the hint of the monster with a call to action and preparation, the dream stage, which is brushing with the monster or agents, it's a dreamlike success with seeming seemingly like immunity to any danger around you, the frustration stage, which is confrontation with the monster but failure to defeat it, the nightmare stage, which is the final ordeal death match where only one can survive, and it seems inevitable that the monster's going to win. And then the miraculous escape, mm. right? Uh, the monster is killed through the courage, skill, and ingenuity of the hero. Other examples uh, include War of the Worlds. Um, and an ad example of this is Apple's attack on Big Brother in the 1984 commercial, their very first commercial that Apple ever did, where the, I think it's a lady runs in and there's like all these computer screens up. Oh and yeah, she's she like, throws a sledgehammer or something, the, right? Yeah, chucks the sledgehammer at the screen and yeah, it breaks. That. So that's a, that's an ad version of the us versus the monster kind of representation there um number two is rags to riches so the rags to riches plot involves a hero who seems quite commonplace poor downtrodden and miserable but he has the potential for greatness that's always the thing right you Mm. gotta have this has got a spark he's the diamond in the rough right um the poor protagonist acquires power wealth and or a mate then loses it all and gains it back, growing as a person in result. Hmm. As with many of the basic plots, there are variations on rags to riches that are less upbeat. So variation one has them ending in a failure, um, which is Dorm's favorite. Um, What Booker calls the, quote, dark version of the story is when the hero fails to win in the end, usually because they sought wealth and status for selfish reasons, and many would classify this as a tragedy. Mm. So it doesn't end. It's not a happy ending. I love like, tragedy. I know you do. It drives me crazy. Yeah. So if you if you don't know, one of the <laughs> one of the catches of my enjoyment of media is when the protagonist doesn't win. Um, yeah. Just in general. Because why not? It's too realistic. Exactly. It's That's more not, realistic. That's why I don't like it. It's too too mean. Um, variation two is the hollow victory. And the second variation are stories where the hero, quote, may actually achieve their goal, but only in a way which is hollow and brings frustration because they, again, have sought them only in an outward and egocentric fashion. Mm, Sort of a gift of the magi kind of scenario. Yeah. Another way to describe this would be like a commie, tragic, like comedic. Uh, comedian. Oh, not a communist. Not, not a communist, yeah. But a, <laughs> you don't hear commie <laughs> shortened for comedy very often. A comedic, tragic ending or personal fa- uh, failure. In other terms, it's an outcome of success, but a judgment of failure since the hero fails to satisfactorily resolve their inner conflict. So, sure. like, sure, we won at the end, but I'm not actually happy. So is it really? It's like a hollow victory. Like Right, or you won in a way that you didn't imagine it. 
we yeah we won but i'm not i, I didn't want to win this way and i'm upset about it yeah um so this is um think aladdin cinderella great expectations this is the like we overcame these over you know these odds that were impossible to overcome and then we lost it all Mm. But we're better people at the end because yeah. of it. So my first thought was Aladdin when mm. I first started reading about it. Have you read Great Expectations? Yeah, I hated it. Book is boring as hell. Hated it. <laughs> Could not, not stand like that it. Book Isn't that the one starting? Is the best of times? It was the worst of times. No, it's, it's uh, Tale of Two Cities. Oh, okay. Well, Great Expectations was that the one that had the old lady that died in her wedding dress in the attic? Yes. Yeah, Charles Dickens. Yeah, it is Charles Dickens. So for sure. freaking ugh, gross. I didn't like that book. Stressed me out. Read it in school. Didn't like it. Didn't like that. Read John Steinbeck's. A novel with one like where he put one chapter solely devoted to a turtle trying to cross the road nice um awful and still would read that 15 times over before i'd read another charles dickens novel sorry I about always, it dicky hated it i always think of uh <laughs> the kind of funny clip where uh colin calls greg the john steinbeck of podcasting because <laughs> he won't shut up exactly like he keeps extending the point out <laughs> he won't anyway, shut up. Sorry, no it's fine um in advertising the rags to riches story is johnny walker whose entire brand history is about a simple Scottish, Scottish farm boy's ride to global prominence. Mm. So, um... I've never seen a Johnny Walker ad. Yeah, so it's... The whole thing is... I guess the whole branding behind Johnny Walker is like, just, just a little... Just a man. Just a, just a dude, and now I'm a brand, yeah. Uh, number three is The Quest. And I had one immediately in mind, and I'm wondering if it's going to be the same one that you have in mind. All right. Um, I'm... It's... It's like a worldwide kind of thing. It's not a you and I specific thing. Okay. Um, so the protagonist and companions typically set out to acquire an important object or to get to a location. They face temptation. So Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Okay. Like immediately. Like yeah. the first sentence, I was like, so it's Lord of the Rings. Yeah. End of statement. Right. Like it, it's, you can boil it down to literally that. Yeah. Um, they face temptations and other obstacles along the way. Sure. Other variations on this basic plot include stories where the object being sought does not bring happiness. Mm-hmm. It's Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, for example, Moby Dick and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. So these are also examples of that. So the structure of the quest is normally the call in preparation to leave, and then the journey, which is usually across perilous lands, of course, yep. uh, strewn with opposition and temptation. Then the arrival and frustration as the quest is not completed. Finally, ordeals with an escalating series of trials. And the goal is finally reached, and the quest is completed. It's also like the Odyssey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's the Odyssey Apocalypse Now, and, of course, Lord of the Rings is yeah. in there. Yeah. On one of my lists. Um, the hero, typically in these stories and quest stories, has companions. And they're usually one of four types. So they're an undifferentiated gr- large group, such as Odysseus's soldiers. Mm. Um, they're a faithful companion, such as Sam and Lord of the Rings. Uh, they're a challenging, contrasting alter ego, such as such as Moses' brother Aaron. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Going to the Bible. Yeah. A set of individual characters with their own stories, such as escaping rabbits in Watership Down. Mm. Um, as with other plots, like the Rags to Riches plot, there's often a false ending in the middle of the story where an apparent end to the quest is dashed and the journey must continue. That's always the coolest part to me is when you th- like you think they've done it, hmm. but it's only been an hour into the movie and you're like, Mm-mm, I'm not stupid. This is gonna go wrong. Yeah, like they're gonna. It's yeah. like the movie Speed. When you think, yeah, <laughs> you told me about this. When you think it's, you're like, okay, cool, it's done, right? And this no, is, there's another. Like... If you've never seen Speed, I've never said this on the podcast. <laughs> if you've never seen Speed. Speed like an hour and fifteen minutes in, gets off the bus. Mm-hmm. Bus scene is over. Yeah. And then there's like another half of the movie that's yeah. on a train, but no, it's just the same movie, <laughs> like a subway train. I wish you could but see. it's the same movie as the as the bus. I don't get it. Wish... It's so stupid. I know we it's don't. Like, have... Oh, he got away. I know we don't have video for this podcast anymore, but I wish you could have seen Dorm just now. It's... Mind boggling. It's so the weirdest mad. story. He looks so mad. He's like, why? It would have been fine if it ended on the bus. <laughs> they had to drag it out for another 45 minutes. Oh my goodness. With their fake Hans Gruber villain. <laughs> All right. The last leg of the journey, likewise, increasingly tests the hero, culminating in climactic action after which the quest succeeds and life is renewed. Um,. So IBM and Lexus are among the marketers who are on uh, self-professed quests, making a smarter planet and relentlessly pursuing pers- perfection. Is that Lexus's Res- tagline? Respectively. Um, Never heard that. I, I think, so I got these from, um, I got these from Adweek. So mm. the, I think the idea is supposed to be that they're like supposed to make, their their quest is perfection. Sure. But they're never going to reach perfection because like nothing can be perfect. Right. Um, 
so they are relentlessly pursuing this perfection that that just means that they just have to keep getting better and better and yeah. better but they're never they're on this quest but they're never quite gonna get there sure no matter how good your car is it's never perfect right so um we already talked about the examples like the odyssey apocalypse now and of course lord of the rings that was like, literally in my notes and of course dot 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 lord of the rings <laughs> uh number four voyage and return so voyage and return stories feature a hero also kind of the odyssey yeah a bit yeah um feature a hero who journeys to a strange world that at first seems strange but enchanting eventually the hero comes to feel threatened and trapped in this world and must make a thrilling escape back to the safety of their home world it's tron <laughs> in some cases the hero learns and grows as a result of their adventure and others they do not and consequently leave behind uh in the other world their true love or their opportunity for happiness Chronicles of Narnia. Corona is one of the brands that also encourages a trip, urging you to, quote, find your beach and return refreshed. Oh, right. So they tell find you, your beach. Yeah, they yeah. tell you to go out, find the thing you need, and then come back home refreshed and happy. So they're, they're encouraging a, a um, voyage in return, as it were. The voyage being to the alcohol. To the alcohol. The liquor store. Um, and then Expedia built an entire campaign around Expedia. the... Expedia. <laughs> is that even a brand anymore, Expedia? Is there, uh, are they still, do they still exist or do they get I don't know, absorbed? but I totally just did the... <laughs> yeah, I feel like they got absorbed into like Hotels.com or I something, totally you know? I totally just did Activia. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you did and I didn't even notice. <laughs> Expedia what was Expedia's had, they jingle? A, they had a jingle. Yeah, but I did Activia. You did do Activia, and, and I would Expedia. not have known. I would not have known. <laughs> if you hadn't brought that up, I would not have known. What was their jingle? But it was like, Expedia.com. Oh, yeah. Was Expedia. that it? Com. Yeah, that Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, got it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got there. Um... <laughs> So Expedia built a whole campaign about the idea of changing one's perception through journey and return. So mm. it was this idea of like, go anywhere in the world and, you know, expand your horizons and eat yogurt um, and then come home and, you know, be better because of it. Mm -hmm. um, examples of this are the Lord of the Flies, Coraline, and Wizard of Oz. So Wizard of Oz. I guess I like that archetype because I like all three of those stories. Yeah. You, you... Coraline, great movie. I've never seen Underrated. it. Underrated. Really never good. It. Never seen it. A lot My of... little sister loved it. Far spooky. too young to love spooky. it. Yeah, spooky, right? But it was really good. Like super spooky, super spooky. One. There's feel a like. uh, there's a song the dad sings in it mm -hmm. that is catchy as hell. Is it spooky? No. Oh. It's like so. Do you know the concept of Coraline? I know there's like a stepmom. There's basically like an upside down kind of place mm. where she has different parents that are like the opposite of what her parents are so like oh. her normal dad is like you know busy and working and writing or whatever and so her upside down well, oh, i'm just sad. saying upside down but like her upside bizarro down, yeah like bizarro family dad is like super fun and like musical and stuff Aww. and he just sings a song and it gets stuck in my head every now and then <laughs> it's just like my eyes are on Coraline. it's just it's very cute it's but don't a very they have, cute like weird song. button eyes yeah and they also i don't remember they kind of want to eat her or something it's weird but like so the bizarro ones go evil or are evil yeah oh i don't remember the plot of Coraline very good but uh, very well but i oh. remember liking it a lot i've always seen like gifs of it and stuff and it's real spooky it is i mean it's burton it's, oh it's that kind of yeah, yeah 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 it's got that same style weird. it's got the nightmare before christmas look to yeah. it yeah and the corpse bride kind of look that's mm. that's that's totally fair awful movie what corpse bride i hated it i didn't bride. see it did not like that movie. I did not see Corpse Bride. Uh, also, not huge on Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, I love Nightmare Before Christmas. I think it's Christmas. fine. I, I, I love it a lot. I get a lot of songs stuck in my head. I know a lot of people love it. I watched it for the first time like two years ago. And I was oh, like, okay. This is fine. I feel like maybe you missed when it would have been when it would have like yeah. actually affected you because like as a kid I, as a kid who wasn't huge into christmas mm. i was like yeah this is so cool because it's like halloween but it's christmas but it's halloween <laughs> yeah. you know like i mean I, halloween's my favorite holiday i just don't I, I, something about it just like stuck, as a teenager it stuck with me and i was mm. like yeah who cares about christmas let's call him sandy claus instead <laughs> yeah let's put heads in boxes and give them to kids for christmas <laughs> whose voice is this i don't know it was me if i was like a surfer i guess gotcha it was me when i was like it was like real Whoa. it was like real i was like real tough and stuff. Hey. It was like real tough by the way this is probably gonna be a pretty quick episode because i'm already at number five and there's only seven that's all right we riffed on nightmare for a christmas flight <laughs> so number five we mm -hmm. can we can talk after we're done with this i'm sure we have plenty to say sure um number five is comedy so light and humorous character with happy or chill for uh, bleh, words are important cheerful endings so a dramatic work in which the central motif is the triumph over adverse circumstance which results in a successful or happy conclusion so booker makes sure to stress 
<laughs> the comedy is more than just humor. So I feel like that's important because I feel like a lot of people hear comedy and tragedy and think, oh, happy and sad. Sure. But comedy is like any, like romantic comedies, any romance story where, where like they end up together at the end, that's a comedy. Mm. That's considered a comedy because right. it's because it's not dead. They're not all dead. <laughs> Unless you're thinking the grim fairy tale version, in which case that would be a tragedy. So sure, yeah. If you're taking like Cinderella and you're doing the Disney version and versus rally, rally. <laughs> versus the um the, the grim the version, version yeah. which is going to be the difference right there between comedy and tragedy. Um, so it refers to a pattern where the conflict becomes more and more confusing, but is at last made plain in a simple clarifying event. The majority of romance films fall into this category, like mm. I just said. Um, but comedy gets confusing though. So traditionally, comedy has been defined in several ways. As any story that ends happily, okay, they consider that a comedy. So literally uh, every movie. Right. Um, so in some terms, this means that the story goal is obtained or the outcome equals success. Mm. So whatever you set out to do was achieved. That means that the ending is happy. Um, even if like you lose some characters along the way or if there's only one character left standing, as long as what you set out to do is achieved, that's still considered a success. So in this case, <laughs> and spoilers, uh -huh. and incredibly heavy spoilers here. Okay. For what? For what? Rogue One. Oh, okay. Is that a comedy? Because they said because their this, goal they, was they, achieved, but they, literally, spoilers, literally everybody dies. It, I mean... Literally everyone. That's what makes that movie so good. I don't know. Like, they're... Probably like, not, right? I don't know, because the end of it ends on a positive note. The very end well, of it... Kind it, of, but they all well, die. Yeah, but the end of it is... is spoilers... Princess Leia standing there saying a new hope. Yeah. And like she smiles. The card thing, yeah. She smiles at the end. So that leaves you with hope for the next one. I guess like that's leading true. to the next one. So I don't know. It's the best Star Wars movie, by the way. <laughs> so, so I don't know. Nobody believes me, but it's true. I did just see that was just on TV the other night mm. uh, when I went home this last. I haven't watched it again since I watched it in theaters. This, this last time I went home. It's so good. And it was on, and I was like, I was like, all right, we just we gotta watch the end. If we watch nothing else, we gotta watch this end because yeah. the ending is so good. The fact that everybody dies is my favorite part. <laughs> well, you know it's gonna happen though. Yeah, and you like, know, you, but like the fact that nobody gets whisked away on a plane or yeah. a plane, but a ship right, right, or anything right, right. like that, like you know, going into it, it's gonna saved. happen because you've never heard these people's names before. Right, and you like, know that never, the planet blew up. It's and then yeah, and it's never you're never gonna hear from them again. And you go into it kind of. I think that was the problem that I had a little bit was I couldn't get connected to these characters because I knew they were gonna be gone. Mm. So. I I had already put up this emotional wall where sure. I was like, I'm not going to like this character. You, an emotional wall? Right? Can you believe it? Never. I was like, I'm not going to like this character because I know they're probably going to die. Mm. So it was hard for me to yeah, see, I just connect with them on that uh, level. Suspended my disbelief. That's fair. And then just that's what them all That's probably what happy. normal people do when they watch movies, but I'm immediately like, nah, you're not going to give <laughs> me. got to know the end. You're not going to give me. Yeah, right? I need to know the end. Um, so if the main character has satisfactorily resolved his or her inner conflict, that's considered a success. That's considered a comedy. So if their judgment is good at mm. the end of it, that's considered a comedy. Um, as a story which is humorous or satirical, of course, that can in be the, a comedy. In the marketing sense of a comedy. Yeah. Um, and with new comedy or romantic comedy as a drama about finding true love, usually young love, um, traditionally these stories end in <laughs> you marriage. You said that with such disdain. Well, uh, because I hate those movies. I hate movies like what's that. What's your favorite rom-com? Favorite rom-com? I honestly don't know if I have one. Really? I don't know if I have one. I can't even. I like rom-coms. I, like, I don't like rom-coms, but when they're good, they're really good. I can't even think of one off the top. Would I guess the first one I thought of was Wedding Crashers, and I don't even know if that's. No, it's just a comedy. Yeah, that's just like a comedy. I don't know if. I can't think of a rom-com off the top of my head that uh, I actually Crazy like. Stupid Love is my favorite. I I honestly can't think of one Sorry. off the top of my head that I'm. That I'm. The I don't book. I never saw The Notebook. Oh, I, really? I knew oh, it would make me cry. Favorite. That's not a... That's terrible. That's a terrible film. I guess it's a romantic film. Yeah. Not a rom-com. It's rom -com. a ram romantic dramedy. Yeah. Rom romomedy. <laughs> what is the worst uh, romantic film you've ever seen? The mo the worst romantic film? Not romantic comedy, just romantic. Romantic I film. I know the answer to, to mine. What's the answer to yours? The Vow. The Vow? Who's in The Vow? Uh, Channing Tatum and Rachel McAdams. It's a Nicholas Sparks movie. The of same, course it is. The same guy who wrote The Notebook. Of course. Well, okay, um, so here's the thing. I don't watch romantic movies. I specifically mm. avoid them because I know I'm going to hate them. The Vow is awful. The Notebook's genuinely a good movie. Yeah. The Vow is the worst movie I've ever seen. Bar none. 
Oh. Literally the worst movie I've ever seen. Ooh. Um, and it's not like... but The reason it's the worst movie is because, like, The Room and, like, Birdemic are obviously worse movies, but they're fun. Did you bad. say Birdemic? Birdemic? Oh, have you never seen Birdemic? Oh, we gotta watch Birdemic. I'm sorry, are there birds in an epidemic? Yes. It's no! Like, you know how the dare mo- you? You know the movie The Birds, the Alpha yeah, Hitchcock how, movie. No, no, no. <laughs> one question real quick just one uh-huh. question just yeah. don't, as an aside don't don't worry about this podcast listener. how dare you well <laughs> it's like the birds but terrible and it's awesome you, we should well, watch it it's great I can't, um, I can't think of a romance like but the vow is terrible spoilers for the vow but you don't need to watch it it's fine um two movies over here uh no they're all in my entertainment oh, center shoot, now they used to be over there but they're not anymore trying to get an idea um I have very few romantic movies but uh the vow is so the whole idea is that they get in a car crash and Channing Tatum loses his memory. Okay. And Rachel McAdams is trying to like convince him to love her again because <laughs> okay. she or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe Rachel McAdams loses one of them. I don't remember. I watched this in like freshman year of high school. Okay. But one of them loses their memory and is trying to get the other one to love them, like to remember who they are and like you know. Yeah. I loved you and I was your whatever girlfriend whatever. Uh, the most exciting part of the movie is the car crash. Oh. Literally everything else is just a snooze fest. It was terrible. All right. All right. Don't judge me. But I did a really quick uh, Google, Google for popular romantic comedies. Yes. Um, Clueless is on here. Not a rom-com. Do you don't think so? That's just a comedy. But they, but she ends up in a relationship at the end of With it. With the stepbrother? Yeah. Yeah. It's just a comedy. You know, there's a line in that story, in that movie where she says, um, we're, we're not from Kentucky or we're whatever. Yeah. And that bothered me. And I was like, wow, how rude. Um, Not a rom-com. You don't think it's a rom com? No, it's a comedy. What do you straight think? up a comedy? What, what, what is what is your difference between a rom com and just a comedy? I think a rom com is the romantic storyline is the major storyline. Okay. But I think that's just a comedy. Princess Bride. Princess Bride is absolutely a rom com. <gasps> Princess Bride is my favorite romantic comedy. Actually, is that a rom com? I don't know. It's a comedy, and the whole point of it is love. Yeah, he's and after romance. her. The whole point of yeah, it is love I guess and romance, that's a rom com. Right? That's fine. Yeah. All right. Thank you, thank you, rom com yeah, judge. The judge of the rom com. <laughs> I don't really consider it a rom com though. Just because I just that's just a movie. Bridesmaids. Uh, a no, comedy? Bridesmaids is just a comedy. Just a comedy. Absolutely, just a comedy. There's no romantic storyline in Bridesmaids, is there? Oh yeah, because yeah, Kristen Wiig and the yeah. cop. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple. What's that guy's name? He was in uh, Pirate Radio oh, too. Oh, I, I don't remember. I like him Pirate though. Radio? Pirate Radio is great. He's movie. also in the like, the IT Crown. Oh, cool. Yeah, I like him in that. Pirate Radio, a really good movie. Um, gosh, I don't know. I yeah, guess Bridesmaids is just com- these are all just like the, the person who made this Ten list, Things I Hate About You. That's a rom com for sure. Okay, then I like 10, I like Ten Things I Hate About You. I, I do like the, that. movie. I love the idea that someone just said like, <laughs> okay, there is a female protagonist in a comedy. It's a rom com. It's, it's a rom com because like yeah. Bridesmaids is just a comedy. Like straight right. up, that is just like Animal House. <laughs> all right, but women. what is uh great? <laughs> what is Fifty Shades of Grey? Not a rom or a com. <laughs> Not a that's rom- just a movie. <laughs> The wrong word it's just porn. <laughs> it's like what do they call it? It's, Softcore porn? It's not a porn until he puts his sex jeans on. Alright? There's a big difference. Let me show you my game room. <laughs> Is that where you keep your Xbox? Thank you. What's a butt plug? <laughs> oh, Literally that's so it's stupid. the word butt and the word plug. This will never not bother me. <laughs> it's the word butt and the word plug. What do you think it does, Dakota Johnson? Anyway. Um <laughs> we're getting off track just a bit. Nah. Um so, with new comedy or romantic comedy, um, <laughs> as a drama about finding true love, which is usually young love, um, traditionally these stories... You said it again with such disdain. <laughs> traditionally, these loves, or these loves, um, these stories have ended in marriage. It's so, my favorite Rune 5 song. <laughs> these loves have ended in marriage. Um, so, pretty much any movie that you can think of at the top of your head that's ending in a wedding. So, it's like, I, I thought like wedding crashers again for uh, some reason and Wage like world two right like it's weird that that was the first yeah one. like all of these movies that what end in the, a wedding what these... is the dustin hoffman movie where he oh, <laughs> he he does like the movie thing of like does anybody object and he breaks in the room oh, I don't right know. and he's like i object whatever and then they write off together and then there's the ending scene i can't remember the name of the movie but the scene's great the ending scene is them just riding in a car and neither of them talking Oh. Because they've kind of realized what they've done. Oh. It's fantastic. That's the entire of course last that's scene. The, of course that's the movie you like. It's so good. It's so smart. Oh I don't remember what the name of the movie is. All right. 
Well, you can look that up if you want to see you, see you looking I'm, it up. Um, Booker makes a valiant attempt at a better definition of comedy, but finds he cannot apply the same plot structure to it as with other basic plots. Instead, he loosely defines comedy in terms of three stages. There's a lot of numbers in this. I didn't realize how many numbers were going to be in this. Um, one, the story takes place in a community where the relationships between people and by implication, true love and understanding are under the shadow of confusion, uncertainty, and frustration. Sometimes this is caused by oppressive or self-centered persons, sometimes by the hero acting in such a way, or sometimes through no one's fault. Mm. Um, two, the confusion worsens until it reaches a crisis. And three, the truth comes out, perceptions are changed, and the relationships are healed in love and understanding and typically malewage for the hero. <laughs> malewage. Um, that's uh, what it's... brings us together today. It's uh, The Graduate, by the way. Oh, The Graduate. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, I, that's a good movie. Super good movie. I was at a, I was, uh, at a wedding one time where the maid of honor did that. No. Did the marriage brings us together. Oh, I thought you were saying Oh, no, objective. sorry. Oh, I totally... Yeah, oh, no, I, you gosh. have the right to think that. I was like, I would die to see that. I want so desperately... Oh, to be Every there? time I'm at a wedding, I want... I'm, like, looking around. Like, somebody say... I do! Somebody object, please. Because <laughs> could you imagine? That'd be amazing. Like, I object. Yeah. That would be fantastic. There was a... Br- we're getting off track again, but Lydia this just is wants all marriages I, to fail. I, well, okay. They will eventually. Well, they will in some way. Um, so, they're... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, statistically, you're not statistically, wrong. Statistically, yeah. Statistically, the you know the rate of people being alive falls to zero. Um, but there was this, there was a, a bride who found out either the night before or perhaps the morning of and her, made her wedding. Vows. Yes, and, I yes, know this story. And when it came time for her to like do her vows, she read all of the the. Found out her husband was cheating. By the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. By sentence. the way, yeah. Found out her husband was cheating, and she read all of like the nasty texts that he had been sending to other women. <sighs> And she said that the um, like nobody left except for him and like his uh, his best man, his and, best man two and two his yeah yeah man. and then everybody else stayed and the reception was just like a celebration of love and happiness and yeah. stuff. She and asked I, people to stay. If they yeah, she's to. like, if you guys want to stay, stay and party. Like, how? What a pa- like. First of all, no, I could not have held my my composure. Oh, I could have. I could not have. That's the moment ooh, of your lifetime. I don't think I could have looked him in the eye, like, pretended to be so happy that we're gonna spend our lives together, and then oh, look... You, I totally could have. I don't know. I want to think I could. I want to think I could, and then I'd be like, one second, and then you turn around and you take your phone from your... <laughs> Pull out a projector. From, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You got just, like, a projector. Oh, just a projector in the back, and you're just, like, you got a laser pointer, and you're just pointing them out, each one side by... Oh. Like dick pics. Oh, my God. That would be fantastic. The flip side of comedy... Like the pretzel crackers. Uh Uh-huh. Is, of course, tragedy. Um, But comedy being the flip side of tragedy and the last of the great storytelling tropes, it's perhaps the hardest to do well, but is hugely popular in both popular art and advertising, with Old Spice and Geico being among brand leaders in the space. Saw a great Old Spice ad. Yeah? It's new. Okay. Uh, And it's like... I forget who's in it, but some, like, D-list celebrity, I forget who it was, mm-hmm. um, is holding, like, a lavender bar of uh, deodorant. Okay. And he and his, presumably his wife, are arguing about, like, she's like, that smells like lavender? And he's like, yeah. She's like, but it smells good. <laughs> and so they're arguing about it, whatever. And the, the tagline is just, men have skin, too. Oh, and It's all about, like, men's so skin good. care, which Finally. is awesome, yeah. Finally. It's a great ad. Well, especially from a brand who has been so like look at us we're manly Uber men masculine, yeah yeah we're manly men you have to smell like tobacco and sandalwood pine and pine trees and yeah. manliness you know you have to smell like fresh trout caught in a spring <laughs> like you can't smell like something we just Floral. talked about this yeah we, mary and i just talked about this on the last stream i think actually is because uh we were talking about you tweeting out that like why is there no lotion like yeah, why did ridiculous. I have to, why did I have to go two miles over to find lotion? Like yeah. why is it not just here? Um, because we started talking about how like Tamer and I talked about how like I use men's razors because they're cheaper. Yeah, and they're they're still just razors. And they're still just razors. Um, and then Mary was like, oh well, I would actually use a woman's razor because I feel like it's like more contoured and like easier to control. Because mm. he's gonna be I don't know if he's shaving his legs or whatever, but like. It was just interesting to hear the different perspectives of people. Cause, sure. Like, I will buy men's shaving cream because it's 98 cents as opposed to right. the 350 that they want to sell me so I can smell like cherry blossoms for 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that is so ridiculous in a pink, giant pink container when, like, sure. a, ma- a man's in, like, a little black and blue one. Yeah. That's my aesthetic more anyway. Um, <laughs> See, I would just go to the pink container. 
<laughs> see, that's funny though. It's it's interesting to see that like I almost violently rally against mm. what is expected, whereas. Like, you and Mary talking about it are like, yeah, sure, why not? Like, I'll yeah. go for flower. And I'm like, no, flowers, I think not. You know, like. like I use, I use <laughs> quote unquote women's, mm-hmm. but it's just, it's product. But like, yeah. shampoo and conditioner. Yeah. I got to go to the quote unquote women's aisle. Yeah. To get it. I mean, like, if it smells good. It's in good, a brown bottle. But if like, it smells good, who cares? Yeah. It's got like, like coconut oil. Like, take care of yourselves. Great. Take care of yourselves. Who cares? It doesn't matter what, you, as long as you smell good, who cares what you smell like? Yeah. You don't have to smell like a fresh, a fresh, fresh caught trout. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to smell like a fresh caught trout. You can smell good. Uh, so we're going to talk about tragedy now. Speaking of um, societal gender roles. Um, tragedy is usually <laughs> defined by its ending, which makes tragedy and comedy unlike the other basic plots. A tragedy is a story in which the story goal is not achieved, yeah. meaning the outcome is a failure. Hell yeah. And the hero does not resolve their inner conflict happily. The judgment is bad. Um, Booker's description of this plot is close to that of the classic tragedies, think Greek, Roman, Shakespearean, the protagonist's character flaw or great mistake, which is their undoing. Um, they are unfortunate and... Their unfortunate end evokes pity at their folly and the fall of a fundamentally good character. So, from the Greeks through Shakespeare, these are stories of the dark side of humanity and the feudal nature of human experience. As such, advertising has little use for such stories. Mm. Except in PSA work, where shock tactics and depressing tales can get people to care about an issue, or those super heartfelt health insurance commercials. Did you ever see those? There's some, like, there's... Listen... There are some of these health insurance commercials yeah. of like these dads that are like working till their dying day and on their deathbeds they're like I did it all for you my daughter and Jesus. I worked myself to death I've so not seen these. so that you could have a life and then he dies and she gets her, his life insurance and she's like crying but she's like able to move on with her life Jesus because Christ. of his it's crazy. They're yeah. like, I don't want to say they're crazy. They're, they're not crazy. They're, they do what they intended to do. I'm talking about it now. So it obviously left, it left right. an impact. But they're like, they're like from the Philippines or something. They're mm. like, because they're all sub, they're, or, uh, they're subbed at the bottom. But like, they're so sad. And it's just like this, Weird. it's like this little girl and this dad and they're like growing up together and she's getting bigger and bigger. And then he's like starting to get slower and she's like starting to go off to college and come back. And like, he's getting more and more frail as it goes on. And she's like starting to worry about him. And he's like signing the life insurance papers and don't worry about me. Jesus. And then he eventually dies and she's like really sad about it, but she's happy because she's got like, she can move on thanks to this gift that he gave God. her. Yeah. That's it's rough. like, Holy Christ! Like, oh my God! Like, I was just here enjoying my my spaghettios, and now I'm just like <laughs> sobbing into my soup because you guys wanted to show me a commercial about I'm sobbing into my soup. <laughs> Team Lincoln story. And uh, sh- sobbing into my spaghettios. Come on! It, it reminds me of those ads. I don't. Do you remember these that were like? I don't know if they were texting and driving ads or whatever they were, but uh, they were just like depicting like fun young teens having a good time and then they get t-boned and the like, car out of are, nowhere and the car like flips but they're still talking have you seen those no i've not seen those. so okay so you're i know what you're talking about yours is like the texting and driving ones or like the not paying attention to road ones but they're just like it's just totally fine yeah like it yeah. just seems like an ad for something else yeah and then this car just gets obliterated yeah just busted and it's like wear your seatbelt or whatever the the, okay so, so these were the ones that i saw were about seatbelts and this guy was like talking to the camera it's like it's just, it was just really hard to wear and it hurt my shoulder and all this stuff. And the whole time that he's giving excuses for why he never wore a seatbelt, it's in slow motion. He's driving the car. Oh, the car's he, like flipping? He's, he's getting hit. He's flying out the, like, out of the windshield. Oh, he's, he's getting, I do kind of remember He's getting these. put on a stretcher. He's getting put into an ambulance. And the entire time he's giving all these excuses for why he didn't right. wear his seatbelt. And I remember watching those and being like, oh my God. Yeah, like, that's brutal. Like, I get it, I guess. It's 9 p.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> like, I get it, I guess. But it's kind of the same idea of when they put, like, an image of, like, a fetus on a cigarette packet. Like, mm. have you ever seen that? Like, they do that yeah. in, in, in other countries. They don't do it in the U.S., but they do it in other countries. So there'll be, like, an image of somebody whose jaw has rotted through mm. because of tobacco use. And they're like, this is what could happen to you. And I remember seeing them in, like, in Mexico when I saw them in Europe. And I thought, this would make me stop. Like, why do we not do this? Yeah. Like, this is really smart. Because, like, all it takes is to look at that one time and be like, ooh, that's what a, that's what a lung looks like when it's full right. of cancer? Like, no thanks. Yeah. Like, but we don't do that in the States. But we should, because it's super spooky. Um, and it would stop me. Anyway. 
Examples of tragedies, speaking of, um, include Othello, uh, Bonnie and Clyde, and the Scottish play that will not be named. What? Macbeth. It's the Scottish play. You can't say it. You can't talk. It's bad luck to say the, the name of the play. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've never heard about it's it. It's considered bad luck to say it um, on stage. Nobody will say it. Um, because, That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. You call it the Scottish play or the Bard's play. It, you never refer to it by name. Why? Because it's considered bad luck. It's it, stupid. It, it's, no, it's not stupid. It's it what stupid. some people believe. So you can't call it stupid. Bad luck doesn't exist. You, you be respectful of people and their thoughts and beliefs. You're just saying Macbeth. There is no real life Voldemort. <laughs> like what? This doesn't make any sense. I've no, never heard it's this. It's just a, it's a superstition. It's like break it's, a leg it, kind of thing. Yeah, it's a superstition. You just don't say the word Macbeth. Yeah, you just. What don't happens say if it? you're on Jeopardy and that's the answer? Well, no, you can say it then. That's on the it's, stage. Yeah, you can say it then. This is like this is like backstage at the play when you're pre- going to perform the play. And you just don't say Macbeth. You say the Scottish play or the Bard's play. That's yeah. so weird. You say the Scottish play or the Bard's play because that's um, it's considered like speaking. If you speak its name, it's like it's bad luck. Which one is the uh, out damn spot? Is that Macbeth? I think it's Macbeth. That's Lady Macbeth. Yeah, she's got blood on her hands and she's yeah. trying to wash. Great her. line. She keeps trying to wash her hands and the blood won't come off. She's washing like a shirt, right? I thought, oh, was I thought she was washing her hands. Maybe it, it, her it, hands. May, it may be a spot. I thought there was like a spot in her shirt, but maybe it's, it's you might be right. Too. I honestly don't remember. I read it. I read it yeah, I, I was going to say, I read it forever ago, and I read it in the 1400s. I don't remember. Um, Julius Caesar, now that's a play. <laughs> I like Julius Caesar. Of course you do. Lend me your ear. Who did this to you? Um, <laughs> seventh and final plot point. It's funny because he was deaf in one ear. Uh huh. <laughs> His rebirth. Uh, an event forces the main character to change their ways and often become a better person. Uh, some forms of rebirth include a traumatic experience and awakening to a new beginning, uh, low self-esteem being increased following a discovery of one's potential, or inner conflict as the kinder side of one's character that wins over the selfish self. Mm. So, like, the kinder side comes through. Like, in A Christmas Carol, for instance, ah. that's a rebirth. You went through Good something... Jacob Marley. Went through something terrible... Came out better on the other side. Um, this tra- this transformation is also fa- is often facilitated by another character, whether it's the wise elder or a romantic peer. Mm. Um, the supporter may do battle on behalf of the afflicted hero or encourage them to step up and take charge. Um, brands telling stories of renewal or rebirth include Gatorade, who did a, quote, replay campaign, which gave aging members of high school sports teams a chance to recapture their youth through me- rematches against old foes. That's cool. How cool is that? I never heard that. Like, you get to go back, like, you fought and you wrestled in the 70s. Like, you get to go back now when you're in your 70s yeah. and wrestle. That's not like, how time works, but okay. Like, yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> but now you're 70 years old and you're going to wrestle. Isn't that cool? I think that's really neat. That's um, cool. And Prudential, which presented retirement as the beginning of a new chapter, not the end of an old one. Mm. So it tried to say, like, no, this is something new for you to start. You're not ending this thing on a negative note. You're sure. starting this on a positive I note. I imagine, like, every weight loss yeah. company. Right. Every, new year, new me, right? Yeah. It's a rebirth every year. Um, <laughs> of course. So examples of this include A Christmas Carol, which I talked about, Beauty and the Beast, It's a Wonderful Life, and The Beauty Secret Garden. Beauty and the Beast. The, the weird thing about Beauty what and the Beast. was the last one? Sorry. Uh, a secret, the Secret Garden. Oh, I forgot all about that story. Strange, right? I read that in like fifth grade. And there's a movie too. A little, a little really? Movie. Yeah, there's a movie, the movie as well. Mm-hmm. Good um, book. The weird thing about Beauty and the Beast, uh, but so, okay, so rebirth often um, happens because a female character needs to be saved in some mm. way. Um, but Beauty and the Beast is different in that they turn it on its head, and that the Beast needs to be saved. Yeah. And through Belle he can be saved. But it takes her to be able to, for him to save himself. Mm. So they kind of flipped it on its head a little bit, but it still falls under sure. um, a rebirth. But it took her as the catalyst to get it going. So they, they kind of, they kind of, you know, tried to screw it up a little bit. Yeah. Like, tried to say, like, sure, you can change, but you need a good woman to do it for mm. you. Um, which is pretty, pretty clever. Anyway, so, in conclusion for the seven plot points, once more, with feeling... Overcoming the monster means it's the hero versus the bad guy. Rags to riches means success in crisis. The quest equals seeking and finding. Voyage and return is boldly going where no man has. Comedy equals from confusion to enlightenment. Um, that was very well done. <laughs> tragedy is the price of fatal flaws. And rebirth is finding the personal light. So you mm. can also mix and match these types throughout different stories, right? Sure. So, for example, a lot of the quest type movies throw in a monster to overcome on the sure. way. 
Um, the original Rocky, for example, is a rags to riches quest movie. Um, Yo, <laughs> Star Wars is a rags to riches quest where the hero overcomes the monster on a voyage and return while the villain experiences rebirth at the end. Damn, yeah. So That's it's true. It's, so all it's, true. it's all of those things. Um, Booker also mentions mystery and, quote, rebellion against the one. Um, but he dislikes them. He dislikes both of these things because he, he felt that in the mystery that went for instance sherlock who is trying to um deduce something that happened there's no inner conflict Mm. for him so he was less interested in that he's like i don't care about what happens to him because he has no inner conflict in the story but doesn't that it's kind of weird if you're classifying things yeah it's a whole thing then doesn't that still Um, make it a type just because you don't like it yeah he didn't care about either of those two be like a sign to say like "Ah, i don't like tigers i don't don't like it so we're not gonna talk about it It so they don't exist in the technically in in the book he talks about nine he talks about the seven and these other two but since he doesn't really go into depth with these other two we're not gonna talk about it we're gonna keep it at seven Um, and i'm trying to keep (laughs) so like i said this is a book you can buy this book now but the book has had some interesting responses to it. Okay. Um, scholars and journalists have mixed responses to the seven basic plots. Some have celebrated the book's audaciousness and breadth. Um, <laughs> it's that audacious, but all right. The author and essayist Faye Weldon, for example, wrote the following, which is quoted on the front cover of the book. This is the most extraordinary, exhilarating book It always seemed to me that, quote, the story was God's way of giving meaning to crude creation. Booker now interprets the mind of God and (laughs) and analyzes not just the novel, which will never to me be quite the same again, but puts the narrative of contemporary human affairs into a new perspective. If it took its author a lifetime to write, one can only feel gratitude that he did it. Jesus Christ. Can you be like, how much did he pay her? I know. Have you... Hey, hey, Booker. Booker, real quick question. How much did you pay Faye Weldon? Have you seen Ex Machina? You told me about it, but no. Okay, so uh, the concept of Ex Machina is, a, without spoiling it, A, because everybody should watch it, a guy is flown out to basically like a Mark Zuckerberg type person, like a genius who runs this internet company. Okay. Uh, flown out to his house to test the new AI. Okay. Which is the robot chick that you've seen from Ex yeah. Machina. But uh, very early on in the movie, they're talking about it, and he was like, you know, if you've created consciousness, he was like, you know, consciousness may be the greatest creation of man or something like that, is mm-hmm. what uh, Oscar Isaac, who is like the Zuckerberg character. Oh, shoot. I didn't um, know he was in it. Yeah, he's like, he's one of the three people. <laughs> There's only three people in the movie. But Oscar Isaac says that, and then uh, the actor's name, I forget, but the main character is like, well, if you created consciousness, not the, that's not the work of man, that's the work of God. Oh. Or that's the work of a god. And then later in the movie, Oscar Isaac is like, hey, you know earlier how you were saying I was a god? And he's like, well, that's not what I said. That reminds me of that quote where it's like, it's so masturbatory that it's like, oh, I'm going to put this on the front cover, even if it's not exactly how I meant it. Right. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. That's totally what I thought about. The idea that somebody would say this about the book. And then you you would put it on the front front of that's a long quote by the way yeah put it on the back with the testimonials or put it on the inside flap of the book put it on the first page put it anywhere but the cover yeah that's like that's so that's so like look at me look what i did kind of thing i created the greatest work of narrative or whatever it's it's i have given god's way of giving (laughs) god of giving god's meaning god's meaning to these stories yeah like that was like yeah okay all right that's a little weird Others, however, you're going to like this one, okay. dismissed the book, criticizing especially Booker's normative conclusions. Novelist and literary critic Adam Mars Jones, for instance, wrote, He sets up criteria for art and ends up condemning Rigoletto, The Cherry Orchard, Wagner, Proust, Joyce, Kafka, and Lawrence. The list goes on, while praising Crocodile Dundee, E.T., and Terminator 2. <laughs> Similarly, I love this person who ever said that. The New York Times writes, Mr. Booker evaluates works of art on the basis of how closely they adhere to the archetypes he has so laboriously described. Mm. The ones that deviate from those classic patterns are dismissed as flawed or perverse. Mm. Symptoms of what has gone wrong with modern art in the modern world. So I actually went and found this article because I wanted to know more about, like, yeah. because what happened was this book came out and the New York Times reviewed it. So right. this is from a review of that book. They did not disappoint i kind of agree with that though it's like 
the 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 part where he was like the mystery doesn't fit because there's no yeah. internal conflict. So what? It's still a type. Like, yeah, it's still you, a plot. You can't have a bias on you, categorizing. You things. don't get to say right. Oh well, I don't like it, so it's, it's we're not, not going to talk about it. Yeah, like if they, like, it exists, it's boring it exists. to me. It, it what that makes it sound like is okay. You've spent thirty four years and you've not been able to fit this into one of your preconceived like right. sections. Yeah, that means you failed. The stories didn't fail because we've all. I mean, because we, we've seen Sir Arthur Conan Doyle make millions of month, like millions of today's dollars on yeah. on Sherlock. So it's like it's obviously something that's successful so you can't call it unsuccessful in its plot if it's brought this many people in i guess even as we were dunking on uh 50 shades of gray like we can't say it wasn't successful right it did what it set out to do it made a bunch of middle-aged women horny but like <laughs> that's true <laughs> it turned a twilight fan fiction into a you know award-winning <laughs> yeah film series and book series so i wonder if the kafka thing is mm -hmm. the metamorphosis it has to be which is one of the greatest stories it I've has ever to read. be yeah it has to be the meta story. it has to be the metamorphosis. dude just wakes up and turns so, into an insect and oh and speaking of like going back to that it kind of made me think of that um so man versus we talked about the types of conflict like man versus man man versus whatever yeah like that like the metamorphosis is textbook like man versus himself man and versus self, yeah. just how terrifying it would be to wake up a big bug <laughs> like that was one big this one big b um so i went to the article i went to the new york times article yeah and i wanted to know what else they had to say that was pretty vicious okay um another great bit from the article is not only is mr booker a voracious magpie who does not always <laughs> acknowledge the sources of his ideas but okay. he also turns out to be an annoyingly biased and didactic, and didactic one. The seven basic plots progresses. As the seven basic plots progresses, it grows increasingly tangentious. Tendentious. Oh, like he's like tangential, like he's Ten tendentious, which I had oh, to look. Sorry, not which I had sorry. to look up because I didn't know what it meant. Well, I never heard this word. Meant that it's trying to sway people towards your opinion or mm. towards normally um, considered something that's like not of the norm so it's something gotcha. that's like trying to be edgy and, yeah. and um what's the word i'm looking for it starts with a c um it's an easy word lady um <laughs> when you're trying to be like wild and crazy and uh cantankerous no caustic no it's Oh, this is gonna drive me crazy. This is the end of my stuff. So now I can just think about this okay. word that I can't think Real quick, of. What is controversy. The... Oh, which I'm trying to be controversial. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. You're trying to be controversial. What does didactic mean? Didactic? Yeah. Um didactic I'm gonna Google it because I know what it means, but I'm afraid that I'm gonna say it wrong and I'm gonna be stupid. Um I don't know what that word means. <laughs> I will fully admit I have no idea what that word means. I did look I've it up. I've seen it before. I just don't know what it means. I did um I did look it up to see what synonyms for it were. So didactic is when somebody is trying to be, was it like pedantic, preachy. Thank you. Um, yeah, let me look it up on the, I, cause I, listen, I have an app on my phone that's a thesaurus. Okay. Is it dictionary.com? Yeah. Yeah. They're great. Maybe just deal with it. Dictionary.com is awesome. Every day uh, in college, I used to look up what the dictionary.com word, but word of the day was. It was really stupid. You learned so much. We used to goof about it. It was fun. Um, so it's inclined, was really dumb. inclined to teach or lecture others too much. Gotcha. Uh, so somebody who's too talkative. So preachy. Yeah. So Basically. Pre preachy, obnoxious. Um, Thank you. Just somebody frustrating. Didn't somebody, know what that word meant. Somebody annoying. I, yeah. Okay. So when I was reading this, I was like, these are really smart people. New York Times has really smart people. New York people. Times has, a, I had has to, a habit of doing that. Where I, it's like, we're going to use the biggest word we I can. I literally, in two paragraphs, had to Google two different words. <laughs> to, and you don't feel stupid until you got to Google two different words in two paragraphs to figure out what they mean. Yeah. I was like, I have never in my life heard of tendentious. Yeah, that's not a word. Why don't you just go... <laughs> Preachy. Or no, no, no. Not... Uh, like... Instead of that, just why don't you just say something like he looks down on people? Yeah, I don't know. It's indigenous. I mean, it's one of those things <laughs> of like you make it stupid for me. It's like when you know that word, you have to use it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I feel like that's what happened. I feel like they turned around their word of the day calendar and tendentious was on there, paper and they were like, the yeah. they were like, oh yeah, using that today. 
New York Times does it a lot where it's like, we could have used, and this is actually something to bring it all weirdly full circle. Uh, when I first started my feature writing class, uh, my professor was like, you know, you was surprised at how well I could write, you know, because I was a design student. Uh, but she was like, you use $10 words too much. Mm. I was like, okay. And so I learned not to use as many $10 words. Did you words. have flowery writing? Did they tell you? I, it wasn't or quite purple, flowery. Purple prose? No, because well, it wasn't prose. It was just journalism. Uh. But I was like using too big of words because I could, I guess. Oh. And so she was like, yeah, you need to tone it down. I mean, it wasn't like the episode of Friends where Joey uses the thesaurus for like literally every word and he writes like <laughs> some garble. But yeah. I guess I was doing that a little bit too much. She was like, you know, a normal She's person like, wouldn't be able to read half it. of this. Like, She's okay. So I learned too that smart lesson. for your own good. So New York Times says that a lot. Yeah. So in a much smarter way than I could. I just <laughs> I wasn't trying to compare myself to New York Times. So if it'll do it, I'm trying to. Oh, there we go. Tendentious. 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 I think I said tendentious. So I even said it wrong. Tendentious. Tendentious. Um, which is like one-sided, prejudiced. Um, is it T N D N T I O I O U S? T N D E N T I O U S. Tendent I O U S. Tendentious. Tendentious. But I was saying it tendentious, so I even said it wrong. I'm stupid times two. Didn't know what it meant. Can't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all that I have about the plots. I've loved reading stories for my entire life, and it was really baffling to me to see that every single story I've ever read or seen or experienced in any kind of media can basically be boiled down. Like, it's seven, seven basic plots. And yeah. every single thing I've ever seen, heard, or played. I mean, I'm sure there is, there are exceptions to the rule, right? Yeah, but there has to be. That's still pretty fascinating. That, and also you can bend it. I was gonna say you could probably shoehorn a lot yeah. of things in. Yeah, you could you could bend something and be like, oh, World of Warcraft, you have to go get something and bring it back to somebody. So, right. That's the quest. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. I mean, that's. So I wonder if it's one of the things of like. Because I don't think anybody sets out, maybe people do now, but Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody set out to be like, I'm going to write a quest story. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Like, they would just have their inspirations, like the Odyssey or whatever, and then that would just naturally fall into place. Because, like, A Brother Art, that was just the the Odyssey. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is fantastic, if you've ever thought about that. It really, like, it literally is the Odyssey. They've said that. With the the sirens and everything else, yeah, and, yeah, and the cyclops, it's been, it's yeah, so good. Um, if you if you guys are interested in writing a script, um, the the book that I talked about, the the guy who did the save the cat thing, if you go online, there's like save the cat dot com or whatever. Mm. Um, they give you like URL. they yeah, they give you like little writing prompts that'll say like you know you know think of think of the plot that you want to have and then think of your log line and then think of your characters and then think of this so they say if you're like trying to write a a script or you're trying to write a story and you can't think of it like Mm -hmm. they'll give you little like little prompts oh cool and they'll say do this this and this what is a log line a log line is when you say uh, it's basically the description of it so um the log line is um a newly divorced woman goes on a tour of the united states with her three best friends synopsis basically yeah so it's so it's the log line is what comes under the um the title of the film to give you an idea of what you're getting into um that's that class is also where i learned the elevator pitch Mm, um combining it's like this and this but with this with the side of this you know like having to be able to speak really quickly about stuff that was one of my favorite classes i really do i want to get into writing again like reading about this i was like oh shoot like i want to write again because it was so fun but uh we already know an idea of ours can be made into a movie (laughs) yeah we already thought of an idea and then it got got taken out so bizarre taken out of our brains but anyhow that's all that i have about that was really cool well thank you i I enjoyed that one a lot i appreciate it I enjoyed, as you were saying them, thinking of movies that were examples. Which is cool, which right? Which is fun, yeah. Because you kind of, like, you go into movies like this and you digest them without thinking of the fact that they've followed this. Sure, yeah. You don't think of the inside baseball yeah. of how the plot was written. Yeah. And I remember and what, what got me wanting to talk about this, really, is I found this Reddit thread when I started looking into scripts and stuff. And this guy on one of these, these Reddit threads was like... He basically just said, help, I've written Star Wars. He's like, mm. what do I do? And he like he said, here's what my character does. Here's how he goes. He said, I've, this is what I've written. What do I do? And somebody commented and they said, dude, every story is one of seven stories. Mm. He's like, all yours has to do is be different. Right. He's like, all yours has to do. He's like, go back, write. He said, all this is an, is an excuse to not write. Mm. He said, go back and write. And that stuck to me. Like, yeah. that stuck out to me. And I thought... 
that's really smart. And so I started looking into the seven plot things, and then you and I talked about the seven plot things. Yeah. And um, then Brian David Gilbert did the uh, the, the, uh, the unraveled. Thing, yeah. yeah, he did the unraveled for the shout out to him on the uh, Kingdom, King, Hearts. Kingdom Hearts thing. Yeah. And he kind of had to like branch off elsewhere. But when he said the hero gets called to action, I was like, oh, I remember this. Like mm. I've read this. So I started looking into it. And I was like, oh, this is actually super cool. And so yeah, so there we go. So that's all I've got. <laughs> that was that was really fun well thank you i enjoy anything that lets me learn about movies and things like that so. it makes you look at stuff a little differently I think, yeah I, I, I don't think this is one of those things like it's kind of like cinematography for me where it's like the first time i watch a movie there are points where i could be like oh the script is bad or yeah. oh the cinematography is breathtaking right but i don't really analyze a movie like that until my second or maybe even third watching yeah. of it but then when you do, it's really cool to dissect something mm-hmm. like that. Like I've seen Ex Machina, for example. I've seen that movie, you know, tens of, maybe hundreds of times at this point. Um, probably tens of times because it's not that old. <laughs> but I've seen that movie a fair amount. And only recently did I kind of, after listening to a podcast with the cinematographer, did I discover like sort of how the power structure is shot in that movie. Mm. And it's so brilliant. And yeah. I never noticed it. I love But maybe like I subconsciously did, you know? Yeah. Like you never know. Maybe that's why I like that movie so much. Yeah. I don't know. But I love stuff like this. When when stuff's designed like that to where the the color grading or like mm. how they have a shot set up has this person closer to you so you're more protective of this character than right. this character halfway across the room. Like subconsciously how they mess with you is similar to how we kind of mess with people with advertising so sure. it's like yeah. so when it happens to me in a film i'm like oh no i got you got, got me right. i got got yeah or it's like, yeah, that, i'm supposed to be the one that gets you and i got got but it, it was super cool to read about it because i was like oh shoot like i'm just the i'm seeing every disney movie mm. right like i'm yeah. seeing every disney movie possible in my head of like oh okay so aladdin is this one and the lion sure. king is this one and this one is this one yeah so that just went back and forth but anyway Thank you for thank you for listening. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you for teaching me about all the story types. <laughs> now I'll never be able to think of things the same. <laughs> Dorm, where can people find you? Twitch.tv slash Stormstreams. Where can people find you? Twitch.tv slash Team Liddy. It's a good pause. Thank you. We also have uh, merch. We have. At the new merch store, Dormstreams.co slash store. Yes. Uh, we have Twitter. Instagram. Snapchat. Discord. Did I... What, is there one I'm missing? Yeah, you're missing two. I'm missing two? At least. At least? I think just YouTube? Two. Yes. Okay. I have a Patreon. Yes. That's the one you always say. I do say, you, yeah, I do say your Patreon. I'm trying to get ahead of you because normally you don't I say Patreon, th- so I, I was going to use it. That might be it. I think that's it. Face- Who knows? Facebook. No. Um, I had Facebook and then it was bad. SoundCloud. Well, that's for my private rap project, but yes. Um, I mean, we're on like Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, all that kind of stuff. Speaking of which, if you're listening, we're on Spotify. We are on Spotify. Yeah, that's, right. that's where I listen to it. Uh, which is still bizarre to me. Um, but if you're on any of those services, you know, give us what do they say, five stars and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, if you if you actually legit, like I know that sounds like BS, but it legitimately helps because yeah. it like moves you up the metadata. It, yeah, it, it it's re- a whole thing. Well, it it not only helps, um, it not only helps like move us up in the rankings, but it lets us know that you guys enjoy the show. Yeah, because. We're kind of speaking into the void a little bit. Yeah, we're just kind of staring at each other across the table right now. <laughs> yeah, and then it just goes up. And then, like, that's it. It's just live. And then that's it. And it's just out there. Um, and if you yeah. don't like the show, don't tell me. I don't want to know. No, I'm just me. kidding. Tell me why. Yeah, if you don't like the show, tell us why. Heartache. Yeah. I would um, rather know that you don't like the show and what you don't like about it Yeah. than I'd for agree. you to just stop listening. Yes. Yeah. I would rather be able I to. Agree with this. I would rather be able to fix something. As the producer of the show. Don't leave. We can change. <laughs> I love you. Anyway. (laughs) Until next time. Be careful where you click.